Hello everyone. Hope you all are doing great. Welcome back to the chapter Chemical Happiness and the Meaning of Life written by Yuval Noah Harari. It's me Sufna Sevier from the Department of English Carmel College Mala. Let's move on to the next paragraph of the chapter. But the definition of happiness is contested by some scholars. In a famous study, Daniel Kahneman, winner of the Nobel Prize in Economics, asked people to recount a typical work day going through it episode by episode and evaluating how much they enjoyed of disliked enjoyed or disliked each moment he discovered what seems to be a paradox in most people's view of their lives take the work involved in raising a child kahneman found that when counting moments of joy and moments of drudgery bringing up a child turns out to be a rather unpleasant affair it consists largely of changing nappies washing dishes and dealing with temper tantrums which nobody likes to do yet most parents declare that their children are their chief source of happiness does it mean that people don't really know what is good for them that is one option another is that the findings demonstrate that happiness is not the surplus of uh, pleasant over unpleasant moments rather happiness consists in seeing one's life in its entirety as meaningful and worthwhile there is an important cognitive and ethical component to happiness our values make all the difference to whether we see ourselves as a as a miserable slave as miserable slaves to a baby dictator or as lovingly nature, nurturing a new life as nietzsche put it if you have a white to live you can bear almost any how a meaningful life can be extremely satisfying even in the midst of hardship whereas a meaningless life is a terrible ordeal no matter how comfortable it is so here harari sees that in a study conducted by daniel kahneman who is the nobel prize winner in economics he asked people to recount their happier moments in their day to day lives and the most of the women said that raising their children gave them great happiness so kahneman found that it's a paradox because bringing up a, a child is not a not an easy task it's a difficult one you have to uh, change its nappies and uh, you have to take care of him very carefully so it's not an easy task it's very difficult but most of the women come up with the answer that raising their children was the happiest moment in their in their life so his finding shows that happiness is not getting a lot of pleasant moments instead it is seeing one's life in a meaningful way seeing one's life in its entirety it is like uh, once uh, uh, frederick nietzsche said if you have a why to live you can bear any how and a meaningful life can be very satisfying even among hardships do people in all cultures and eras have felt the same type of pleasures and pains the meaning they have ascribed to their experiences has probably varied widely if so the history of happiness might have been far more turbulent than biologists imagine it's a conclusion that does not necessarily favor modernity assessing life minute by minute medieval people certainly had it rough However, if they believed the promise of everlasting bliss in the afterlife, they may well have viewed their lives as far more meaningful and worthwhile than modern secular people, who in the long term can expect nothing but complete and meaningless oblivion. Asked, "Are you satisfied with your life as a whole?" People in the Middle Ages might have scored quietly high in a subjective well-being questionnaire. So here Harari sees that medieval people they were probably happier because they believed in god and life after death it gave them some kind of meaning to their life from scientific scientific point of view human life has absolutely no meaning but medieval people started assigning some meaning to life uh, by believing in god and life after death any meaning that people ascribe to their lives is a delusion So our medieval ancestors were happy because they found meaning to life in collective delusions about afterlife yes 
as long as nobody punctured their fantasies. Why shouldn't they? As far as we can tell from a purely scientific viewpoint, human life has absolutely, absolutely no meaning. Humans are the outcome of blind evolutionary processes that operate without goal or purpose. Our actions are not part of some divine cosmic plan. And if planet Earth were to blow up tomorrow morning, the universe would probably keep going about its business as usual. As far as we can tell at this point, human subjectivity would not be missed. Hence, any meaning that people ascribe to their lives is just a delusion. The otherworldly meanings medieval people found in their lives were no more deluded than the modern humanist, nationalist and capitalist meanings modern people find. So, here uh, the, the, the writer Harari is making a comparison between medieval people and the modern people. He's saying that medieval people were, they were probably more happier than the modern people. They were happy because they believed in God and they believed in life of after death and they, they somehow they, they wanted to find meaning for their life by believing in all these things. So from a scientific point of view, human life has absolutely no meaning and any meaning that people describe to their lives is a delusion. The scientist who sees her life is meaningful because she increases the store of human knowledge. The soldier who declares that his life is meaningful because he fights to defend his homeland. The entrepreneur who finds meaning in building a new company are no less delusional than their medieval counterparts who found meaning in reading scriptures, going on a crusade or building a new cathedral. So here Harari is giving some examples uh, on which how, on how people are finding meaning for their life. Scientist who say for, who says her life is meaningful because she increased the store of human knowledge. She gives she does some research and she adds to the human knowledge, the, the system of human knowledge. And the soldier who declares that his life is meaningful because he fights to defend his homeland. He's doing something in order to make his life meaningful. So perhaps happiness is synchronizing one's personal delusions of meaning with the prevailing collective delusions. As long as my personal narrative is in line with the narratives of the people around me, I can convince myself that my life is meaningful and find happiness in that conviction. This is a quite this is quite a depressing conclusion. Does happiness really depend on self delusion? So here Harari sees that scientists find meaning in increasing knowledge, soldier in fighting for his homeland, entrepreneur in building a new company. Happiness is synchronizing one's personal delusions with the prevailing collective delusions. There are some collective delusions in our society and we find happiness or we relate our happiness by synchronizing our personal delusions with the prevailing collective delusions. This may be a depressing conclusion. The author concludes the essay by leaving this question to the readers does happiness really depend on self delusion so with this we can end this chapter thank you have a good day